Welcome to week two of our group and our study, Teach Us to Pray, where we're spending six weeks drilling down on what we commonly call the Lord's Prayer. I don't know what the last week has been like for you, if you have been more intentional about praying, or maybe you've found that your prayers have been richer and deeper, or maybe it's just been an all-out struggle and it feels like everything in your life is working against you. I'm so glad that you're back and devoting yourself to learning and exploring and growing in your relationship with Jesus. You may remember that the only thing the disciples ever asked Jesus to teach them, that we know of, is how to pray. Jesus, teach us to pray. And his answer to that request is what we know as the Lord's Prayer found in the book of Matthew chapter 6, right in the middle of his most famous teaching called the Sermon on the Mount. You should pray this. This is how it reads. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This week, we're going to focus on that opening line of the prayer. Actually, the first two words of that prayer our Father. Now for me, I wear a lot of hats in my life. You probably do too. I wear a husband hat. I wear a friend hat. I wear a pastor hat. I wear a son hat. I wear an in-law hat. I wear a neighbor hat. I wear a brother hat. But perhaps my greatest and most privileged hat that I get to wear is the father hat. I'm a dad to three kids, Jordan, Jessica, and Desiree. I'm their father. And while they may call me many other names like dad, big squirt, and sometimes even bro, I'm their father. They're my kids. And I have a practice that I don't get right 100% of the time. And sometimes it's just not possible. But whenever I can, I try to make it my practice that whenever one of them calls me, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and answer it. Sorry, I'm going to have to take this call, right? It's one of my kids. Now, I want you to hear at the very beginning today, that's exactly how God feels about you. Hey, this is one of my kids. My highest priority is to hear what they have to say. The first lines of the prayer are crucial to how the rest of the prayer actually looks. I mean, that's true, isn't it? How we begin anything, especially our prayers, is foundational to what follows. My wife and I have built a lot of IKEA furniture together over the years, We put together shelves, assembled cabinets, even entertainment centers. We built bedside stands, and most recently, we put together a bed. If you've ever done this before, you know just how true this statement is, that the first step is crucial to how the rest of it looks. There have been many times where I may have ignored the directions and said, looks easy enough, I don't need these. Or maybe you've accidentally put something on the left side and it really belonged on the right side or you used the 3 16th inch dowel pen instead of the quarter inch, and you thought you were finished, and you tried to stand it upright, and you stepped back to admire your work, and it was crooked. I've had to go back and start over on a few projects because the first step makes all the difference. And it's the same with prayer. How you begin the prayer determines a lot about what follows in the prayer. And Jesus says the way to begin your prayer, the way that sets you up for everything that follows is to begin this way, our Father. Let me just acknowledge at this point what some of you are already struggling with. Some of us have a hard time with this idea of calling God Father because we had such a strained relationship with our dad. I don't want this to be the entire focus of the week, but I can't stress enough that the view of our Father, good or bad, will tend to impact our view of God as Father. So can I say that again? The view of our Father, good or bad, will tend to impact our view of God as Father. In in a book titled Not Forsaken, the author Louis Giglio suggests that there are six types of fathers. I think it's important to consider these in light of how they can potentially impact our view of God. Let me just run through them quickly. Number one, he says, is the absent father. Our father was never there, right? Or he decided to leave. Or his absence exists because he's passed. We had an absent father. One in four kids today is growing up in a home with an absent father. 
Number two would be the abusive father. Some of us suffered at the hands of our father. It was unfortunately physical or it was emotional. Number three is the passive father. Our father may have actually been present. I mean, he was around, but he didn't contribute a lot. He was not necessarily engaged with what was happening. Others of us had the performance-based father, that when you did something well, he seemed to love you. And when you did something poorly, it seemed that you didn't receive as much love. His response to you was largely conditional. Number five is the antagonistic father. Your relationship was filled with conflict and tension, even at times some competition. Your father was not necessarily for you. He was actually against you. And then the last one, number six, is the empowering father. He he loved you no matter what. Win or lose, he was there for you. He wasn't a pushover by any means, don't get me wrong. He was not afraid to set boundaries, and he wasn't perfect. But his love was unconditional. Now, all the research and all the studies and even our own experience tells us that without the love, approval, and blessing of a father, there's a gap in our life. And that view of our father, good or bad, will tend to impact our view of God as father. And we likely have some difficult work to do in regards to how we view our father. And we likely have to do work to change our view of God as father. And here's a thought that I found helpful. Maybe you will too. It comes directly out of the book. God is not the reflection of your earthly father. He's the perfection of your earthly father. So when Jesus says, Pray like this, begin, our Father. This was revolutionary for people. No one called God Father before Jesus did. And I think he's trying to highlight once again the importance of relationship in prayer. The disciples and the crowd hearing Jesus say this would have to change their view of God as well. In the Old Testament, God is addressed as Father only seven times. And in every case, It's the entire nation of Israel speaking to God that way. As far as we know, there was never a time when Abraham or Moses or David or even Daniel went to their special inner room, prayer closet, fell down on their knees and spoke to God this way. Yet when we read through the New Testament, 275 times or more, we're told directly or indirectly that when we bow before the sovereign creator of the universe... The word that should first and most easily come to our lips is Father. The Greek word used here in Matthew 6 is pater. It's where we get our words that you're probably familiar with, paternal, paternity. In Aramaic, the language that Jesus mostly spoke, the word would have been Abba, which was a term of great intimacy and affectionate respect. It was normally the first word a child would say when they began talking. And in the same way, It's the first words of the prayer. It's not just the address of our prayers, but the very first parts of your time with God need to focus on who he is. It means that we pause at the very beginning to make sure we lay the proper foundation for what follows. We pause to spend time thinking about and expressing just how big, awesome, and holy God is. He's the creator of the universe, God of everything. He's big and eternal. He was here before us, He'll be here after us, and he invites us to call him Father. And the longer you stay here in your prayer, the smaller everything else tends to become. The more we rush through this beginning, the bigger and more overwhelming the rest of your life will seem to be. At the very beginning of your prayer, you're establishing a relationship with God himself, understanding him as Father. And maybe we should just stop talking after those two words and rest and remind ourselves that he can be trusted. He's smarter than we are. He has our best interest in mind. God, you are our father.